Hi, Judy from Witch Peacecraft. Welcome to this Sunday's catch up, the week that was. It's a Sunday, August the 7th. So, I thought I'd do a bit of a catch up video what I've been up to this week, crafting and doing stuff. So, let's get started. I have some finished objects, acquisitions, and a bit of chat for you. So, my first up is my finished objects. So, with it's summer. It's summer in the Northern Hemisphere and it's starting to warm up here, a bit of sunshine. So it's time to keep your hat on. And I don't usually make summer hats, but I thought I would have a go. So the first hat I made was inspired by Tonya from Calm Resist Stitch. She made it a few months ago. Um, I think she made it for her local knitting shop. Um, I think it was a request by them if she'd have a go. Now the patterns, tutorials, everything I talk about will be listed in the description below this video so you can check it out and have a go if you want. So it's a paid for pattern that I bought on Ravelry. I didn't particularly buy it on a good day, exchange day, so I paid $8. But it is the Amari hat using Noro as a guinea or as a guinea, sorry if I pronounce that, yarn. And that is the hat pattern I used. And here is my finished result. Ta-da! My hat. Now, I didn't use the Noro yarn. It, I have to get the Noro yarn in. Very difficult to buy here. It doesn't particularly fit my model very well. She's got a very small head. But I did use this yarn. It's called Good Earth Yarn Cotton Linen Blend by Fibra Nature. I bought this yarn in the, the coral colour and in this elderberry colour a few years ago. I was going to over dye it but I didn't realise it felt like it did and it wouldn't be good for over dyeing. So it was sitting in my cotton stash which I tidied up last week and I decided I would try it on this hat and I really do like the way it turned out. Now I have some, taken some photos of me wearing it and I will post them at the end but please no negative comments. I know I don't rock a hat but yes I thought I'd show it you on a bigger head. So that was the first hat I made this week. Yes there's more and then I saw that Crystal from Bagger Day had released a bonbon bucket hat. Now, I really like her chocolate bonbon beanie. It is a go-to tutorial for me whenever I want to make a great beanie. It always turns out well. And I became tempted to make her bonbon bucket hat. And I have some cotton in my stash. Premier cotton blend that I thought would look good in it. And I wanted to use some of it up. So here it is. My bonbon bucket hat. Tutorial by Crystal at Bag O Day. Like I said, my ladies' heads are quite small, but yes, I've taken photos of me wearing that. I really like the way it turned out. Now, I bought this yarn quite a while ago from Premier, and um, I bought it for a set project, and I found out it just wasn't working being a full weight, it was too heavy, and I thought it made a great summer bucket hat. So that is hat number two, my bonbon bucket hat. Now the last market stall I had, my friend, gentleman with the masses amount of dreadlocks, asked for a summer slouch hat in cotton. And I thought, well, I'll give it a go. I didn't promise him anything. I thought, well, I'll have a go. So I found Little John's tutorial for a slouch beanie. And here it is. So that to about there. That back bit to give it a nice feature is Little John's tutorial and then from about there to the band it's me. Now it is quite slouchy but to be honest I still don't think all these dreads will fit in it. But that is my summer slouch hat made in 100% cotton. Now the yarn I used is Click Heat and Nourish. Um, which is lovely and soft. It would be perfect for babies. It does split a bit, so you have to crochet carefully. It's normally here about $11 a 50 gram ball, but I actually did pick up these two colors, which is sapphire blue 
and I can't remember the other colour, in, on sale for five dollars each. And it took, believe it or not, three and a half balls to do it to that length. So I have used quite a bit of it up. Um, if I see him and he, uh, and he likes it, I'll just give it to him because it was just an experiment. So talking about my charity markets, well, I messed up again. Here's me thinking it was today. And it's not. It's next weekend. And yes, I've got an email. And yes, I will be doing the charity market. So the race is on to do some crochet tea towel toppers. I think I've done five now this week. Hopefully I'll do another five next week. And have at least ten to sell. Someone did ask me about markets. And I thought I might do a um, video on my markets, what it takes to, what I take down there, what it takes to set up, the fees, is it worth it, all that sort of thing. But keep in mind that in the Northern Hemisphere, it could be different. I know in the UK, some of the market stall fees are quite high from a friend who does regular markets. Um, ours are pretty standard here. There's one or two that people have complained to me are really high, but I actually only do my local community market. And Saturday, yesterday, I went down to see the Tea Cozy exhibition where I entered my cane toad and naked gardener. No, I didn't win. Um, but I do, wandering around here, a lot of positive comments and laughs about my cane toad. The lady who won the knitted section where they were entered did an amazing, um, I guess you'd call him like a pilgrim type person sitting down with his big hat and his white stocking. A lot of work went into that. Um, the crocheted section I didn't enter. I was a little disappointed in what the judges picked. I thought there were better options there. And the what they call the other sector where you can be creative, make a tea cozy, whatever way you think, using recycled rubbish. There was one that was about this high, which was made out of Lego and over, excuse me, hiccups, over a teapot. There was lots of unique ones there. And yet again, I was disappointed in what won it there. Um, it was a Babushka doll tea cozy, you know, a Russian doll, but it looked crocheted. And I don't know what it was doing on that table because what goes on that table is like, if you do like a knitted tea cozy with some crochet, then it's combined and it becomes other. The same vice versa. You can make sewn ones, um, recycled materials. And this just looked crochet, but it won. And I didn't think and I didn't think it was that great. But that's just my opinion. It was still a lot of fun to go and see it. Because on that day is the pyramid race. Um, if I ever take um a photo of the um pyramid in Gordon Vale, a big mountain, people race up it and down it. So that's going on, and there's the market day. So we had a wander around the markets. And the good thing is that we like, and it's worth the trip, is the Gordon Vale Bakery. And they are amazing. So, yes, of course, we bought pies and vanilla slices to bring back for lunch with the Reeves. It was awesome. We had a good day out. And today, Sunday, well, it was my AGM, and that went really well. I love my committee. Meeting's over in less than 45 minutes. And we go and have lunch and a chat and it's really nice. I've had a lovely Sunday lunch. So my acquisitions now. Before I show you this, when, years ago when I first started my channel and podcast, um, re, um, Thing bought, gave me a $200 gift voucher for my birthday to buy a yarn from an Australian yarn company. And I bought a heap of Red Heart Super Saver Ombre and I showed it. Now, one lady gave me feedback saying it was cheap and nasty yarn. Why was I wasting my time? Why did I want it? And you know, at the time I thought, well, that's just me. So if you're not into Red Heart Super Saver and you think it's cheap and nasty, thank you for watching. I'll see you next week because I'm about to show you my acquisition. So I ordered this quite a while ago from an Australian company called American Yarns. They get in Red Heart Premier, they get them in some American yarns that you that they have on their list that they can get. And the Red Heart Super Saver can be quite expensive, but it was actually on special when I bought it. So I probably paid about $7 Australian a ball, 
which probably equates to what you pay for Red Heart normally in the States. I wanted these particular colours. I have to pause the video. It won't be a moment. Sorry, I was about to have a coughing fit. Yes, I still have a bit of infection left from COVID, but I am 100% on what I am and doing well. So normally I would use Spotlight Super Saver US style yarn, which is a lot like Red Heart Super Saver, but their colours aren't as strong in some of the things I want to make for Amigurumi. So I bought the colours I wanted. So I love this red. So I bought hot red in two, two balls of it. I bought this yellow. And I can't remember what it's called. Dum, 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 dum. Bright yellow. I bought two balls of this bright yellow. And the whole reason I went online to buy it was because I wanted this green and you can't get it in the Spotlight Super Saver yarn. And here it is. It is, I think it's called Spring Green or something like that. Yes, Spring Green. I really wanted this. And because it's all for Amigurumi, I got some white and black. So they get it in for us. Now, like I said, I ordered it hey, just ago, and I actually forgot about it. And then it turned up. And I had a lovely with compliment slips apologising. There's a bag. For how long it took to get here. But there was no urgency for it. So I'm fine with it. That's the thing when you buy it from the American Yarn Company. It may take a bit of time to get it here. It's an Australian company that brings in American yarns. Which I think is really great. That they give us that option to do that. And yes, they do have specials. I have lost something, which may have to stay lost. <laughs> anyway, that is my acquisition. And if you don't like Red Heart Super Saver, I'm sorry. I really do like it for Amigurumis. And I am making more and more Amigurumis. So my... Today, this morning, before I went off to my meeting, I started my luck of the draw number six. I had my yarn colours picked months ago, waiting for Nan's Next Knots to start it. It's currently being hosted by Trish, no, Mama Swift, Trisha at Mama Swift, because Nan isn't very well, Nancy's not very well, and she's helping host it, which is really great. Um, I did buy a pattern, thinking I would make this particular pattern, um, from a Ukraine designer, but it turned out to be quite involved, a lot more involved than I thought, and I've decided I'll leave that till another time, and I have come across something else I'm making. So when I get a bit further along with that work in progress, my luck of the draw number six, I'll share it with you. So guys, that's it for this week for me. Um, next week, well, work really starts to slow down and get back to normal, which is great. And I will be concentrating more and more on getting better. Just a little still tight in the chest and get breathless, but not as bad as I was. So what are your plans? Are you making for summer or is it cold where you are? What are you making for winter? Um, remember to stay well, stay safe, and you could make a bonbon beanie bucket a bonbon bucket hat for summer like me it was so easy and such a great tutorial okay guys bye for now